Hey everyone, so we are a month out from Street Fighter 6's release and we've also had the first major tournament for the game in the form of CEO. So now we're really starting to see the method developed for this game. I think one month and one tournament is enough time to really like see the initial sort of direction the game is going, what's good, what's bad, which characters are coming out on top, especially CEO, I think there are a lot of lessons to be learned. And now that the game is in this state where we can sort of comment on the general mechanics, I think it's time to talk about the drive system. Particularly in this video, I'm going to be ranking the drive system mechanics going from the worst all the way to the best. Now, there are five main mechanics to the drive system. It is, of course, the key component and gameplay mechanic of Street Fighter VI, more so really than anything else. I think this really is the defining aspect of this game. I mean, it's such a strong set of universal tools that it really does define the meta. And once the mechanics sort of get rebalanced or changed, it will be really interesting to see where the game develops to. Now, before we get into this ranking, of course, this is just my opinion. There is one disclaimer I have to talk about, which is I'm going to rank the drive parry and the perfect parry separately. I think these two mechanics are sort of distinct enough that they warrant their own section. So there are going to be six things to talk about in this list. So yeah, without further ado, let's jump into this. And yeah, if you do like this video, make sure to give it a like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications, do all the usual, because there is definitely more Street Fighter VI content coming. All right, at number six, at the worst of the mechanics, I'm going to be putting the drive reversal. Now, the drive reversal, if you don't know, I don't blame you because it rarely gets used and it's rarely seen. Even the pros don't use it outside of uh, very few specific situations. It's definitely the least interesting aspect of the system. It's basically just a V reversal from Street Fighter V. Uh, it costs two bars, and I think that's one of the problems. This is meant to be a get off me mechanic, and I think for a get off me mechanic costing two bars, there are way better things to use your meter on. And I think that's one of the issues with drive reversal, in that why would you use this instead of using an EX move, an overdrive, or a drive impact or a drive rush if you're going in. Now, like I said, drive reversal doesn't see a lot of use, but it does see some in a few niche situations where you're like really getting pressured by a heavy rushdown character, it can help. Uh, some of the zoning characters get use out of it. I think there is a quite advanced Dalsim player that uses it quite a bit in order to get people off of him and put some distance between. So I can see that there are probably some niche situations where drive reversal is really good, but outside of these specific situations and for certain characters, it's definitely not the best way to spend your gauge. I think this is probably a case of the other mechanics being just way too good because all of the other mechanics I'm going to be talking about after this are, I think, super solid and are really great additions to the game. Compared to those, drive reversal does get left a little bit behind. So I think it will be interesting to see whether eventually when there's a patch, whether Capcom decides to address the mechanic and make it a little bit more useful because right now I just don't feel like it's worth spending gauge on. All right, moving on to number five, I'm going to put the drive parry. Now, like I said previously, all of these mechanics are good now. So wherever they get placed, they have a place and they have a gameplay use, but this is a worst to best, so I have to put them somewhere. Yeah, I'm going to put the drive parry at number five. So don't get me wrong, the parry is excellent, but I think it does pale in comparison to some of the stronger mechanics we are going to talk about later on. It is, of course, a great defensive tool. We saw it used a lot during CEO, especially against the heavy zoning characters. It's great against Guile. Uh, it's great against just a lot of general stuff. You can parry everything in this game, uh, of course, with the balance being that you are giving up your gauge if you don't actually parry anything and of course you can be thrown out of it and all that. So I think it's a great tool and it's not too OP so it's kind of perfectly balanced. There is low cost to it so you can use it plenty of times. Uh, it does make zoning weaker but it doesn't make it overly weak. You can still kind of play around it and you can zone really well in this game so parry doesn't shut down everything um, but it does make the game a little bit more tactical instead of just you mindlessly throwing out fireballs. And of course, if you are on the parrying side, you are giving up mobility and of course you are weak to parries. I think there is a chance that parry will evolve and 
maybe it can become dangerous. It will be really interesting to see whether the game shifts to just parry, 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 maybe even more so than blocking all the time. But right now it's a great tool, but it's nothing super powerful and I think it's very, very well balanced. At number four, I'm going to be putting the overdrives. So yes, this is the EX Special moves. EX Specials have been a core system in pretty much every Street Fighter since like the beginning. So yeah, the EX system is now the overdrive system, which takes a lot of getting used to when you're talking about it. So if I do call it EX, just know that I'm talking about overdrive. So yeah, honestly, you might think this is low for placing overdrive specials, but I do find that EX special moves for a lot of characters and definitely for certain characters have a lot less uses in this game than in previous games. Of course, EX special moves are great and the overdrives is definitely something you should be using. You get combos, EX DPs, your EX fireballs, all of these are super, super great. But I think within the overall gameplay, especially during combos, when you have the options we're going to talk about later, I see EX moves used less and less compared to, yeah, like I said, the later systems. Just to give you an example, I find that grapplers in this game have very little use for EX moves. I'm talking about EX grabs. Uh, everyone would much rather spend a bar to drive rush than to do an EX SPD or an EX Manon grab, especially since you don't have that previous mechanic where you got both Oki range and damage from an EX throw. Here you still don't get Oki, so it's kind of an interesting balance. But yeah, even with combo characters, while you can do EX moves with something like Ken to launch, oftentimes you will be drive rushing instead. And like I said, don't worry, we'll be getting to drive rush, uh, and that tends to be just way, way better. So yeah, overdrive is great, it has a ton of uses, but I think it's less of a defining core mechanic than maybe it has been previously. At number three, I'm going to be putting drive impact. Now this might be controversial, I think people are still pissed about drive impact overall as a mechanic, so people might be freaking out that this is not at number one, or the contrarians will be freaking out that this is not at number six. So while this is controversial, I know, I think DI definitely has its place in the meta, and it's a great universal tool, but I do think that as the game ages, it's going to see less and less play. Already, you'll see that high-level players are using it very, very tactically. It definitely has a lot of great uses, and it's a great tactical tool. But I think that as people get better with reactions, and this is including both the top players and both the general population, it will become much more of a gamble to use DI, and it will become less of a defining powerhouse in the overall meta. Like I said, DI is great and it has so many uses. I think it's actually a great mechanic. If you use it tactically, you will be absolutely chewing your opponent up and they're going to be looking like a chump. It's great in the corner, it leads to huge damage. If the opponent burns out, the mechanic is super dangerous. It checks random button mashing and just like a lot of random stuff is shot down by DI. It can get you out of a lot of trouble as well. There are some characters people are finding out who are very weak to wake up DIs, so it has a use there as well. It's a great, powerful universal counter and mechanic. But there's also, of course, the balance of you getting reversed against it, which means you will be eating the same amount of damage. I actually really like this mechanic. It's, I think, powerful, but I don't think it's as powerful as some people say it is and are freaking out about it. And I think it doesn't actually need any tuning. It will just be something that we'll need to see how the overall gameplay develops. Because like I said, even now I see, and I find myself shutting down random DIs online a lot more as well. So yeah, it's definitely a mechanic that is great, but it has its counters. At number two, I'm going to be placing the perfect parry. Like I said, I do feel that the perfect parry does warrant its own little section, even though it's not like a separate part of the drive system. I placed the perfect parry so high because I think this is the mechanic with the most potential to evolve. Now, if you look at the game like Third Strike, which also had universal parry, that mechanic developed so much during the life of that game. Uh, in the end, people were just like absolutely ridiculous with what they could parry. And I think the perfect parry in Street Fighter VI has definitely the potential to develop into that. We already saw in CEO that a lot of players are using the perfect parry and they're using it quite well. Now, 
I think where the perfect parry is going to shine is I think as the game develops, we'll see that a lot of these like spammable one hit moves, I'm talking about the, the hooligan combo from Kami, the Blanca ball, I think those are going to be really dangerous to perfect parry because that is actually the perfect counter to it. Now, there is a great balance to perfect parrying, which is that the scaling is extremely high, but I think that people will become really dangerous when they learn how to perfect parry really well. Now, I do think that this is a mechanic that will mostly see high level players use, but I think it will sort of filter down, just like how third strike parrying filtered down as well. And of course, the balance, we'll need to see how it develops because, you know, at the end of the day, who cares about high scaling and low damage if you're constantly parrying your opponent and blowing him up? Right now, I think the mechanic is in its infant stages. And, you know, I think it's, like I said, something that has the potential to quickly spiral. But I do think it will affect the meta in an interesting way. Again, I don't mind this mechanic. It's niche and it's very skill-based and it can be countered, but I think it's really kind of currently overlooked and it has the potential to become game-defying. And finally, at number one, I do not think there's anyone who follows Street Fighter VI right now who didn't see this coming. Number one is naturally going to go to the Drive Rush. Drive Rush is absolutely 100% the meta right now. It was kind of obvious even before CEO, but I think CEO really cemented it. Street Fighter VI right now is Drive Rush VI. Drive Rush does absolutely rule, to the point that I think this is maybe the one system where the balance should be looked into as soon as possible. While this is a mechanic that all characters have and all characters benefit from, this is I think the one mechanic that does have some balance differences. Characters have very different speeds and distances that they travel, and of course, considering the different gameplay styles, i.e. that characters like Ken, Jury, Kimberly, the rushdown characters basically benefit a lot more from the mechanic than someone like Dalsim, it is interesting and it is kind of problematic with how strong it is. Essentially, it's cheap to use in terms of your meter investment, it's easy as hell to use, and it can lead into some ridiculous stuff, like I said, especially for the rushdown characters. I mean, you have like Ken, Luke, and Jury doing full screen rush in 50-50 overhead low full combos. Now that is some MKX shit in my opinion. It's just one of those mechanics that is great for everything. It's great for combos, great for getting in. There is like really, really no downside to it. And I think that is kind of the issue, that this is the one mechanic that to me seems like has no downsides. Sure, very, very good players can check it um, if you have like godlike reactions, but that is something that is very difficult to pull off consistently, especially when you have characters like, you know, DJ, who are just, you know, flying across the screen. So right now, this game is Dry Rush City, especially at high levels. It is absolutely the dominant meta. To address the previous point about overdrives, this is exactly what I was talking about. You know, what's the point of extending your combos using overdrives when you can extend your combos way better and get way more damage and, and many times get better okay if you're just like Dry Rush comboing? And I think the issue here is that this is the one mechanic that overshadows the rest of the drive system. The issue with it is twofold. Like I said, it just is great for all situations and is cheap. The second issue is that even if you burn yourself out, the burnout is something that good players deal with very well. And the benefit of dry rushing into oblivion really outweighs the negatives, as 90% of the time you'll be in a huge life lead even if you're burnt out and you can just go on the defensive and wait for the meter to come back. And that really is the issue, that the cost is so ridiculously low, especially for the parry cancel one. Listen, I'm not the type to call for nerfs early and I don't like it, but I think both with the online play and with CEO, we are really seeing that this is absolutely the dominant mechanic right now. It's very clear and I think it will be interesting to see how and when Capcom addresses it. It's not critical, I'm not saying it is. It's not like, like super broken, everybody's bitching about it. It's not, it's a fun mechanic, it still is a part of the game, it will always be a part of the game, but I think the main issue is just that it just gets so much more use and so much more play than any of the other parts of the system. 
So yeah, Dry Brush, I think, is still great. It's going to be interesting to see how it develops. And yeah, we'll see how the balance shifts as this game's life cycle goes on. Overall, the drive system, I think, is a fantastic addition and a fantastic idea for the game as a whole. And it's a great implementation by Capcom. And I think it's not so difficult to balance and make the system a little bit more interesting and varied. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Thank you guys very much for watching. Like I said, if you did enjoy, make sure to like the video. More Street Fighter 6 stuff on the way. And yeah, I hope to catch all of you next time. Peace out and goodbye.